Now, the new GoPro Max 2 is great in a lot of key areas except one, the software. In particular, the desktop app. The mobile app, the smartphone app is great, no problems there. And it's got one key feature within that that is lacking on the desktop side, which is the automated tracking, the AI tracking option. That means when you shoot 360 video out here like this, you may want to be able to track a given object. So for example, right here, you can see my wife cycling along. I'm holding the pole out in front of me, off the side of me, etc. And I want to keep her in the center of the frame the entire time. On the smartphone, as you can see right there, it does this automatically. You just draw a little square around her and it's good to go and it tracks really well. But on the desktop app, that option isn't there. And that's because GoPro essentially has two different desktop apps. The first one is GoPro Quick, which they discontinued a few years ago. They have an on and off relationship with desktops app. They kill them, they bring them back, they kill them. They do this for like a decade, right? The other app though is the GoPro Player app. That app is very much alive and updated, etc. But essentially just for viewing files and converting files. Versus Insta360 and DJI, they have both desktop and smartphone apps. Now, in the case of DJI, their desktop app for Windows is pretty limited because it doesn't have this tracking capability. But Insta360 on both a Mac as well as Windows does have that tracking capability, and it's pretty handy. Of course, they have a bunch of other tools as well in this app, but I'm just focused on the tracking bits. So I want to show you how you can use Insta360's app to do GoPro's tracking on the desktop. It's a pretty cool little workaround that solves the majority of this problem on the desktop side. So I'm just gonna grab this clip right here, uh, the very first one. This is the clip that basically I just showed you from the desktop side, sorry, from the smartphone side. And you can see if I move around on the framing there, uh, there is my wife. Now there's no option to automatically frame in the GoPro Player app. I can manually frame by pressing that little keyframe option and do this all the way through and it's just a giant pain in the butt, right? Don't really wanna deal with that. Instead, I want to do the automatic framing. Uh, now, at the top here, you'll see there's the batch exporter option. We're actually going to use this instead of trying to do any conversion from the thing itself. So I can even close this window, and we just have the batch exporter option opened up right here, and I will clear out this one. So I'm basically back to a fresh start there. Now I can add a file. So I'm going to go to the file uh, that I had right there. I will drag it in. It is as simple as that. And on the right-hand side, you can see resolution. I set to AK. I'm going to leave the codec as HVC. 10 bit color depth, and then I'll go to max bit rate just because. So, what we're doing here is converting from GoPro's uh, proprietary format, if you will, into a more open 360 format. That's because the Insta 360 and DJI app, just like GoPro's own app, uh, only opens up either their proprietary formats or the open format for the 360 content, but they don't open up each other's proprietary formats, which that makes sense. Uh, so, what we need to do here is we've applied changes, good to go, uh, and then I will change my output directory to something more useful. GoPro is already done with this whole conversation. There we go, and I press the start button. Now the simple math in terms of conversion times for this MacBook M1 Max from a few years ago, I guess like five years, four years ago, something like that, is roughly one minute for every one minute of footage, roughly speaking. So two minutes will take roughly two minutes, a little maybe a little more than two minutes to convert. Um, and this is, I have all my apps running in the background and stuff like that. If I were to turn off some of those apps or something else, it might speed up, but that's not how my real world workflow would be. So that's the simple conversion time there. Oh, and note that I do have a full comparison between these three cameras coming up uh, in probably just like two days. That's my hope anyways. So definitely stay tuned for that or just simply watch this video all the way through to keep the YouTube gods happy. Okay, so with that finished, I'm gonna open up the Insta360 Studio. Like I said earlier, you can technically also use a DJI Studio for this as well, but two things. One, I find the DJI Studio pretty buggy still. It crashes a lot, so I'm not gonna use that. And two, if you're on a Windows machine, then the tracking piece won't work. Insta360 Studio is a much better application overall, so they're both free. You might as well use the better free one, right? Okay, open up Insta360 Studio. You can download it from their website. I'm sure you can find it. Uh, and wait for it to open. And then I'll simply drag that MP4 file right there into it, just like that. And boom, I'm now in there. Now I can move around just like in uh, the GoPro Studio. I can skip around, etc. And now I'm gonna find a little snippet of her. So about, uh, let's see, you can see right here. There we go, 15 seconds or so into this clip. And I'm gonna choose this option right there that says deep track. Uh, so lower right hand corner there. And I'm just gonna, you can see it automatically found two people to deep track. I will simply select her and as easy as that. It's now gonna go ahead and basically in real time, so the same speed as I exported roughly, um, you'll see it's tracking her automatically and it's just gonna keep her in the frame. Uh, now, this will take the entirety of this particular video clip, which is two minutes and 38 seconds, to complete this deep track. It's the exact same thing on the DJ app as well, again, by the way. Uh, but yeah, here's the Insta360 app. 
I won't make you watch this whole thing. I'll let it finish up first, and then I'll explain how to adjust stuff. Now you can see right here, it's struggling a little bit. It's gonna produce some wonky results uh, as it gets really close to the bike. That's a bit we're gonna go and manually edit a little bit later on. Okay, so it's finished up there. Uh, now you'll see this green section on the bottom there. That's the bits that have been deep tracked, uh, basically AI tracked. And I can skip along anywhere I want and change the field of view, for example. Um, I can change the framing and so on. So you can see right here, remember it was starting to really struggle in this area. If I play this back, it's mostly got it figured out. It's not quite the framing, like right there isn't a framing I want. So all I have to do is just simply move it with my mouse, as simple as that. I can also zoom in and out by using this little menu right there and bring it out, but you can see only that so far. But if I move it like this, up a bit more, there we go, readjust things slightly, and then hit play, it'll keep all that stuff. And I can just do this as I'm moving along, right? I can just kind of say, you know what? I want this shot right here it up a little bit and so on. And now in this case, this is a little bit messy because I was really close with that particular stick uh, versus here. I'm just going to let it go ahead and do things automatically. Of course, one of the nice things about the Insta360 Suite is there's a lot of other options as well that you can do. Uh, so for example, I play right here and I turn on the motion ND filter. Um, it adds a little bit of blurring on the outside, so it makes it look like she's going a little bit faster. She's already going pretty fast as it is, but nonetheless, you can do that. Uh, you can also easily turn that on or off, of course. And again, there's many other options in here to adjust things as you see fit. Uh, all things that there isn't in the GoPro desktop app, the GoPro player app at this point in time. Now, once you're done and ready to roll, all you need to do is press the export option in the upper right-hand corner, and now you can export out that flat file. Uh, so you can see I can choose a bitrate. Obviously, I'm going to crank it up just because I can. I'm going to use 38. 40 for the 4k size i'm bringing up that bitrate and then i will choose h265 there we go to save me some space and then i start the export now the export process is super quick unlike the conversion to 360 footage conversion of flat footage generally happens very very quickly so you can see it's completed there that's just accessible via this little icon up here that shows task center that's where you can see all the things that you've exported and if they're done or not. Uh, and then you can just tap on this little folder icon to open it up and you can see right there, I didn't bother changing the name, so it just has a one after it. So then when I open this up here, there I'm now back in the GoPro player. Doesn't really matter though, because it's not a 360 file. Uh, and you can see I can't move it around, right? It's just, it's stuck how I rendered it out. And if I just skip around to some sections right there, you can see it's framed exactly how I had it framed in the Insta360 app. So super cool stuff. Uh, it's really nice to just have free things that just work, right? So in this case, uh, while GoPro doesn't have an option, their competitor has an option that works with it for free. So hopefully you found this interesting and useful. If so, give it a like down the bottom or subscribe for plenty more sports tech goodness. With that, have a good one.